Let me take him back almost three years to September 2016. I'd finished about 60% of me American Civil War armies that you can see before you. And I was looking around for suitable rule sets. I had been trying um, a set of rules by a gentleman kid named Robert Lloyd, a fellow YouTuber. And he was creating a beta set of rules and they had the name of Officer Commanding. And I had the ACW variant, version 1.6. I had, I had um, done test battles for him on earlier versions and uh, with his permission, uh, I fought this battle. Now, when Robert designed the game, it, it was in an epic style game where the board would only be about two foot square and you in that you'd be able to fight Gettysburg. Uh, he didn't use troops as such, he used wooden blocks, not wooden blocks like in Commanding Colours, but like long sticks. Like you see in that Gettysburg game, um, different coloured uh, rectangular sticks. Now these sticks, uh, each one was an element, and an element could be, be anything from a a brigade, a brigade up through a division right up to a corps. So um, one of these sticks could be anything from 5,000 men to 50,000 men. So it was very abstracted. Well, I asked Robert if I could try using his rules, obviously with using my miniatures rather than blocks of wood, and take it down to the regimental level, which he agreed to. Because I thought if, it, if it's going to break, this, this, this game's going to break it. But actually, I think they work pretty damn well. Um, but I'll let you be the judge of that. And uh, the battle with, that I chose to fight was from the Glory Hallelujah supplement, Wilson's Creek. But more of that in a second. This is the page from the Glory Hallelujah book showing the, uh, the deployment for the battle of Wilson's Creek. However, I only show the Skeggs branch that comes off Wilson's Creek. You don't actually see Wilson's Creek. It will be to the right of the map and to the right of my table. But as it didn't figure in the battle, I didn't show it. I've simply showed Skeggs branch and then laid out the troops pretty much as it shows you on the map. The whole table looking from the Confederate side. The units are shown in the starting positions, but the artillery is not yet deployed. As you can see, there are five rebel brigades facing only three Union brigades. The Union Army of the West, under the command of Brigadier General Lyon, comprises from left to right 1st Brigade, three infantry regiments and one artillery brigade, 2nd Brigade, also three infantry and one artillery, and finally, 3rd Brigade, comprising six infantry regiments. The Confederate Army, under the command of Brigadier General Ben McCulloch, has five brigades. From front left to right is 3rd Brigade, six infantry and one artillery, 4th Brigade, three infantry and one artillery, and furthest from the camera is 1st Brigade, of three infantry regiments. At the rear, nearest the camera, is 5th Brigade with 3 infantry regiments and finally 2nd Brigade of 3 infantry and 1 artillery. Looking over the farm along the Confederate lines. The Union forces too. Off the table is a brigade of Confederate cavalry who will enter the table behind the Union right flank, near the trees, at some point during the battle. Also off the table is the Union 4th Brigade, made up of four infantry regiments, one cavalry regiment and one artillery battery, who will at some point enter the table behind the Confederate troops. McCulloch has sent them off on a wide encircling movement, the aim being to catch the rebels in the hammer and anvil situation. Turn one. The Confederates won the initiative role 
and attempted to activate, activate both brigades on their left flank. However, a roll of a 1 plus 1 for being experienced troops meant that only one element, in this case regiments, from each brigade could advance. The single regiment from the two nominated brigades, marked with a red disc, moved forward. The Union commander also wanted to activate two brigades, but he has no intentions of advancing. Instead, he wants to deploy his artillery. A roll of 1 plus 1 split between the two brigades means he can do just that. The two batteries are unlimbered and prepared for action. Turn to Confederate initiative and the same two brigades are nominated to advance. This time a 6 plus 1 enables the remaining units of each brigade to advance. The two brigades are now close to the stream and back in line. Turn 3 and it's the Union initiative but movement is declined as even the artillery is out of range so no firing. The Confederates attempt to advance the large third brigade and with a roll of a 6 plus 1, all 6 infantry and the artillery can advance. The Reds now have 3 brigades at the stream, all in good order. Turn 4, the Confederates attempt to activate 2 more brigades, and with a roll of 4 plus 1, are able to advance the whole of 5th brigade and 2 regiments of 2nd brigade. So the Confederate advance to the stream continues. A close-up of the now disjointed 2nd Brigade. Turn 5. And both sides could now roll to see if their reinforcements would arrive. However, both failed. The Rebel Commander is confident in his greater numbers on the field and orders two brigades to advance across the stream. With a roll of a 6 plus 1, this is achieved. The left and central brigades are now across the stream and the artillery battery unlimbers. This move puts both sides artillery within range of the enemy. Confederate guns maximum range is 20 centimetres, whilst the Union is 24 centimetres. Batteries open up on both sides, but only one scores a hit. The Union battery at the bottom is successful in counter battery fire, forcing the rebel battery back across the stream. Turn 5. The rebels, anxious to get to grips with a numerically inferior force, attempt to advance two brigades, but a roll of a 1 plus 1 only allows one regiment of each brigade to advance. With only two Union batteries now in firing range, both open up. Once again, the, bottom, the battery at the bottom of the photo scores a hit, this time on the infantry, forcing them back. The Rebel Infantry Regiment is now back across the stream alongside the battery driven back in the last turn. Turn 6. For the Confederate Commander, the Dice Gods are once again against him. A 1 plus 1 only allows one unit of each brigade to advance. On the left an infantry regiment and he also chooses to advance the artillery battery back across the stream and into range of the Union guns. On this occasion, both Union batteries fire with no effect. Turn 7. Both fail to activate their reserves again, which are still off the table. Taking no chances, the Rebel Commander activates just 3rd Brigade. He rolls a 5 plus 1, and so all, barring the artillery battery, can advance. The four leading regiments are across the stream, the two behind have also taken the movement penalty for crossing, so can move their full distance when next activated. Mixed fortunes in the artillery exchanges, the two batteries engaged in counter battery fire both hit. The battery is a miss. Consequently, both batteries had to fall back 8 centimetres. Turn 8, finally a successful reinforcement roll, and the rebels have it. A Confederate Cavalry Brigade appear on the Union right flank. The Union commander is now forced to give a brigade order. He orders the far right regiment to turn and face the new threat. 
Nervous troops obey the order, well aware they know of the enemy on two fronts. Two front. The Confederate commander, seeing the confusion and realignment of the Union right flank, knows it is time to strike. Unfortunately for him, I am throwing the dice in my normal aplomb. He attempts to advance two brigades, but with a two plus one, can only advance three regiments into musket range. With the Union right now threatened on two fronts, the rebel troops push forward. The crash of muskets and the roar of cannon fill the air with smoke. Well, four white discs, actually. You need a good imagination. Only the Union artillery battery scores a hit, forcing one of the rebel infantry regiments to recoil. The Brigadier General of the Confederate Cavalry surveys the scene before him. Forward, boys. Massed ranks face each other across the field. Sure as hell seems to be a lot of them. The threatened Union right flank. 